And now to our panel, as a new, shocking, horrendous image emerges alleging that the LTT chief's 12-year-old son was killed in cold blood. Does this, in a sense, add momentum to the campaign being advocated by those countries who think that the Sri Lankan government and regime should be censured for war crimes? What are the options before India? Tamil parties are asking the centre not to save Sri Lanka. But can India afford to take a clear position on this complex subject? Let's introduce our panel this evening. We're joined by V. Narayan Swami. He's, of course, Minister in the Prime Minister's office. With us in the studio, Subramaniam Swami. He's, uh, among his many roles, uh, President of the Janta Party as well. We're also joined by D. Raja. He's, of course, a senior leader of the CPI. We're joined by G. Parthisarthi. He's, of course, a senior diplomat. We're also joined by Minakshi Ganguly, the South Asia Director of Human Rights Watch. And from Chennai tonight, we are joined by poet and activist Meena Kandasamy. Later in the program, we'll also be talking uh, to a representative of Channel 4 who's actually released those shocking images. Mr. Narayan Swami, if I may start with you. India will have to decide in uh, about 48 hours uh, what Delhi is going to do at this vote. Uh, the release of this image of Prabhakaran's 12-year-old son apparently taking five bullets in the chest is only added to the moral pressure on Delhi. Has the government made up its mind? What will you do? What position will India take? No, as far as the, the human rights violation which is being uh, uh, considered and especially United Nations uh, the council that is coming for a discussion what kind of resolution which is coming has to be seen by our government and apart from that are they in Tamil Nadu all political parties are together on the issue of uh, the human rights violation in Sri Lanka in 2009 war between the Sri Lankan government and Prabhakaran LTTE yes in fact, the, recently the Honorable Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, she wrote uh, two letters to the Honorable Prime Minister that the government of India should support the, uh, the, 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 the resolution which is coming from the United Nations Council. But sir, Jayalalitha's letter, the, but sir, if I may interrupt you there, one of Jayalalitha's letters actually expressed concern uh, that India's foreign ministry has said it will not take a country-specific position. It will take a general position no, on human right. rights but not take a position against Sri Lanka. No, we cannot jump to any conclusion before the resolution coming before the <laughs> United Nations Council. What kind of resolution is coming, it has to be seen by the government of India. What would you like and India to do? Even what would you like? You're, you're speaking Parma today Chief. the minister in the Prime Minister's office. What would you like the government to do? No, no, as far as the, our government position is very clear, as, as far as our country is concerned, our government is concerned, wherever human rights violation is there, our government condemned it everywhere. Okay. And as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, let us see the resolution. Let us see the situation that is there. In fact, several political parties in Tamil Nadu, they told the Honorable Prime Minister to take a decision on, on this issue that, that, that our government should support the... But sir, here's the, here's the point. Here's the point. The, point. the clock is ticking. We don't actually have that much time to determine what that position is. Subramaniam Swami, why does Mr. Narayan Swami's response amuse you? To me, it is me because uh, we have to look at this not in the point from the point of view of what the Tamil parties or whatever you call them. I don't know what is the meaning of the well, word Well, all Tamil. the major, many political, uh, the majority I mean, uh, of the political uh, parties in Tamil Nadu. Uh, they are the office bearers of some political parties, but this is not the majority opinion in Tamil Nadu. We are not going into this question. It is a national security question for us. LTT was an anti-Indian organization. It had assassinated a person who had been a Prime Minister of India. It had carried out all kinds of sabotage activities in Tamil Nadu before the Chandrasekhar government dismissed the DMK government. Now, we are dealing with, a, with a, two different problems. First is that the Sri Lankan president fought the war against LTT, which was essentially a war on behalf of India in one sense, because the LTT was an enemy of India. It was bringing in... Uh, uh, narcotics into India is doing all but kinds of things. What about rules of war? What about now, the image you see? Wait, wait, wait a minute. There are rules of wait, war. Wait, of course, there are rules of war. Uh, there are rules of war which apply uh, to uh, uh, any uh, insurgency. It applies to Manipur. It applies to Kashmir. It applies to what the Americans are doing with the drones in Pakistan. So it's not a question of isolating uh, Sri Lanka and focusing on that. You're saying there's double standards in the world's response? Of course there is. A, there's not double standards in the world response. There's a double standard in the media response. The resolution itself, 
the only thing that's before me here, mm. the only thing against it is it's one-sided. It doesn't talk about all the horrendous uh, human rights uh, violations, by, violations the by the LTT, which is still going on. Yeah. And uh, the amount of money that is going all over the world to finance uh, LTT. So activity. according to you, before I move on to D. Raja, the image you see today of a 12-year-old boy taking five bullets in the chest. It's not a 12... I don't mind you saying about a 12-year-old boy. But Prabhakaran's son, as if there is something special about being Prabhakaran's son. Any 12-year-old well, boy... I mean, I'm just... No, we don't know who did the killing. You're basing it on some of your British channel, which can come up with all kinds of things. Okay. I have seen on Kashmir all kinds of images on British television. Yeah. You don't make that as a, as a basis. D. Raja, the conclusion. question is that India goes and votes a certain way at a UN debate around this issue. Tomorrow there'll be a UN debate around human rights violations in Kashmir and Manipur. What will we do? Can we afford to be so bold no, no, in the position we take? Let us not uh, confuse things. India's problem, if you want to discuss Jammu and Kashmir, if you want to discuss Manipur, Northeast, I am prepared to discuss. Now we are discussing Sri Lanka. What happened in Sri Lanka? It was a war. The Sri Lankan minister admits it was a war. Of course the it was a war. war against LTTE turned out to be war against the entire Tamil population in Sri Lanka. And, uh, you don't should, agree? Yeah, of course not. No, no, we should yeah, absolutely not agree. Agree. Whether he agrees or not, that is what happened in Sri Lanka. That's That's number, one, number one. <laughs> number two, you should also understand, it is not a few leaders in Tamil Nadu who are demanding this. It overwhelming, I can ah, say, 100% okay. Tamil people That's in Tamil Nadu are demanding. Uh, let us go and have a referendum. Of if, course, you can if, have, a referendum. If anybody have a referendum. No, no, no. We have had no, a no, referendum. No, don't, the don't, all the pro don't, LTT don't people say, lost. Don't, no, no. Even, even during election campaign. Mr. Raja, no, 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 no. Mr. Listen, Raja, Mr. what is your even, position? Even is your position? Even during election campaign, Jailalita and her party raised the issue Shreya of Sri Lanka. No, she won. She won. No, she won, she won, no even this issue she was, was only on 2G even, even this issue was there. I was in Tamil Nadu <laughs> during campaign. The Congress, no, Indian, na huh? Indian National Congress President, Madam Sonia Gandhi. Okay, let me interject here. She spoke on Sri What would you want India to do? We, we, we are looking at what would you want India, India to do? India should not do anything which bails out Sri Lanka. India and, should not do and, anything and, that bails out Sri Lanka. The, those who were responsible for such horrendous war crime, human rights violation, must be prosecuted, must be brought to the, uh, uh, the justice. And... Okay. No, no, I am okay. saying... Okay, okay, let me take this to Mr. Parthasati. Let me take this yeah, to Mr. Parthasati. You can't close your eyes. And the resolution you, is yeah, one no, no, before us. 8,000 or 40,000, it, it is, uh, it is may not... May I interject here because and there are also other people waiting to speak. Mr. Raja, hang on, just no, one minute. No, hang on one minute, I'll come back to you. Number. I'll come back to you, I agree. 8,000 is not a small number. Mr. Parthasati, but diplomacy is not run on principles alone. And, and, and here we, we can't even seem to reach an agreement on what the principles at stake are. What are the realistic options before New Delhi? I think, Barkha, your listeners need to know what this resolution is. Yeah. Sri Lanka set up a commission which they call the Lesson, Lessons Learnt and Reconciliation Commission. Yeah. They made certain recommendations. Let me enunciate the main recommendations. Okay. The main recommendations were, one, there was evidence to suggest that there had been excesses during the final stage of the war and these need to be investigated. Yeah. Point number one. Point number two, they went on to add that the LTTE was no humanitarian organization and they were referring to a fact I well know because Barkha, I went in when the Indian Army was operating yeah. against the LTTE on eight occasions. Yeah. The LTTE callously used Tamil civilians as human shields I have seen it with my own eyes in the Jaffna hospital. This was an LTTE strategy. Now, the American resolution, merely draft resolution at this stage, makes two points. Firstly, that please implement the LLRC. And second, they want the uh, United Nations intrusive role in that, in that. What is the Indian position been? Not very different from the American position. That we want human we rights want, to be investigated. We want the human rights things to be, investiga uh, to be investigated okay. by a credible mechanism. Okay. So the, the difference is very important because we must remember this resolution has already been opposed by China, Pakistan, a large number of African countries yeah. and may not pass. What is our aim? Our aim is to get the Tamils their rights. Mm. This is point number yeah. one. That can come only by a dialogue with the Sri Lankan government. 
The Americans can't deliver. So do we abstain? No, just a minute. I'm not saying. I, there's much uh, space in diplomacy between abstention and joining. This has to be negotiated. We push for a change in the wording of the, the resolution. The wording has to be seen to be not... Just a minute. Yeah. Mr. Raja, I didn't interrupt you. Please no, don't interrupt me. I don't no, no, no. you. What are you talking now, about? Now, okay, now, now the, the point is, we have to ask for a resolution which fits in with our position, that it has to be credible. But there's a difference between being credible and being intrusive. And diplomacy can resolve that. So, so not investigating So the, cho the choice is not either or. The second point I, I, I wish to bear in mind is, look, we are pouring in 500 crores for resettlement of Tamilians. The external affairs minister was there to inaugurate a housing project of 50,000 houses for them. We are investing in the uplift of the northeast by the reopening of the Kanke Sintar airport, the Palali airport, and we're building railway communications between Colombo and the north. So, if you're going to do this, and not get replaced by the Chinese or pushed out by the Chinese and Pakistanis. Yeah. You have to maintain a certain degree of credibility with the government. The, the past is the past which needs to be investigated. Okay. And the future, the future is the welfare of the Tamils. We are pouring in around 1,000 crores, Barka. So here's I have been to the I'm island a week ago. Think. I have been to the island a week ago. People want to get on with life, here, with a better life. Let me life. put this to the panel. You're mm -hmm. saying... Nothing wrong in saying that the excesses mm -hmm. should be investigated, yes. but we do not necessarily have to back the mechanism being the United Nations. Yes. That's it. That back over the United States proposal. Or the United States proposal. So that the mechanism because that's to going to come back to bite India one day if we support something yes, like in a way like that. Yes. Let's get quick responses to that. D. Raja, acceptable. Stand up for the human rights violation. It doesn't have to be Western-led, America-pushed. Down it, is not, it is not Western led or American led. Uh, uh, I mean, campaign. as the as left, I, you should no, not uh, have that, any that's patience what, for that's that. What, that's what I'm saying. I know what is America, as, <laughs> as uh, good as uh, my friend uh, Subrani Sami. It is not the issue. The issue is United Nations. United Nations. I am for United Nations initiative. I okay. am on the side of United Nations. Okay. And he admits, yes, there were excesses. What excesses? It's not small excess. It was war. The Sri Lankan minister admits it was a war. War on and one section of the country, that is Tamil population. And 8,000 were killed according to the Do, minister. Dr. Swami, do you, do you accept? Do you no, accept? No, no, no. I, one I more have to go to the others. One, more, yeah. point, one yeah. more point. There were banned chemical weapons used <laughs> against Sri Lankan Tamils. Schools were attacked. Hospitals this was were not attacked. proven, sir. We have to also be responsible in what asked. we say. No, no, I am saying, no, yeah. no, it, it all, the, there is evidence. United Nations. Okay, I need to get, I need to, I want to get the human rights perspective, evidence. but just a what political saying, response first. Finally, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, quickly, you want a UN backed, you want, you want a UN backed investigation? I've got that. Dr. Swami, Pata's uh, suggestion of a middle ground. I don't know what is middle ground. Is. The middle ground I, is I, the no, past for the investigation. I'm not on any middle ground. Okay, what I'm should India do? I'm saying that the Sri Lankan government themselves set up, the president set up a committee, which is the, yeah. as he mentioned, is the LLRC committee. Yeah. And that itself says that there have been a human rights violations. Yes. I would say in India too, I would admit that there are human rights yes. violations. The question is whether it was targeted killing or uh, that the human rights violation took place or in the fact that in the course of the war there was uh, indiscriminate use of uh, firepower. Now, those are some things that have to be investigated, no question, and the Sri Lankan government is investigating okay. and oh, I, is ready for it. Is, and, and you leave it to the Sri Lankans I, I think, in a way is what you're saying. Quickly, Barkha, 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 One, it, 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 it was a no-holds war. Yeah, 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 sir, coming no in holds barred war. Yeah. 21,000 Tamils died. Some 6,000 Sri Lankan soldiers died. As for that young boy, I want to say this. Let us let it be investigated because I would like to say Prabhakaran and those around him always used human shields. So it, it, it could well have been caught in a crossfire. But I'm not passing judgment, it has to be investigated. But okay, but, it, but at the moment, the Channel 4 documentary alleging that it was, it, it was five bullets. Yeah. Oh, that, that's, that, that's what they're saying, okay, and we yeah, will be talking that, to them. Uh, Mr. Narayan Swami, what you're hearing are very yeah. divergent views around this panel. Uh, but what you're also hearing is that India can't afford to take a very obvious position because we are also dealing with insurgencies, and tomorrow this could come back to haunt us. Madam, there, there is a clear distinction because give me a minute, I'll have to explain. Because there are two excesses according to the report. 
One report is that that at the last stage of the war, Sri Lankan army, they exceeded the limit and uh, human rights violations are there. On the other side, LTT also has been using human beings, shield, and thereby innocent people were killed. Because the picture has to be clear. The inquiry has to be conducted. The preliminary inquiry by, by the Sri Lankan officials, LLRC has uh, prima facie proved. Okay. Now when the resolution comes, when the investigation is complete, concluded, then government will take a, take a position. Because one thing, nobody is to be protected who are, who are the killers. Because we will not compromise on killers of Rajiv Gandhi, our leader, the CLTTE. Okay. That position is very clear. Okay. As far as the violation of human rights violation by Sri Lankan government is concerned, when the resolution comes, the government will take its position. Okay, so you're saying you need to see the wording of the resolution. Minakshi Ganguly, talking from a human rights perspective, when you deal with conflict zones, you hear this a lot, especially when terror groups are involved. You always have states responding and saying, but what about the violation that is committed by the terrorists themselves? Now, of course, one doesn't justify the other, but does it, in a sense, uh, make this black and white debate a little more grey because you're hearing people here tonight saying but the LTT also used children as shields, the LTT also used women as human shields. What is the, what is the position of Human Rights Watch? Human Rights Watch actually said that there were allegations of war crimes by both sides, by the LTT and by the Sri Lankan army and they all need to be investigated. Uh, we also said that there should be an impartial and credible investigation because previous investigations by the Sri Lankan government, uh, including one which was headed by Justice Bhagwati, who is an Indian uh, uh, very respected uh, judge, uh, former judge, uh, the in, in, eminent persons group, uh, had, to, had to walk away in disgust because the Sri Lankan government was not conducting that investigation properly. Now, I think everyone that has been speaking on your panel, Varkha, have all actually been making completely reasonable points. The one, the two unreasonable points I find here is one, that the, one of the Sri Lankan officials claimed that India has been dropping broad hints that it will support the Sri Lankan position, will support Sri Lanka at the Human Rights Council. In fact, India has never taken that position. As, as Minister Narayan Swami just explained, India has not taken a position because it has not yet seen the language of the resolution. But the Sri Lankans have been preempting and, and guessing at Indian positions like this despite a fairly strong diplomatic silence from India's side. Okay. India has signed, a, has signed a joint agreement and a joint statement with the Sri Lankans actually asking for almost everything that this resolution is asking for, which is a credible investigation into all allegations of human rights violations. But I that think is one point. Yeah. The other, side, yeah, the other side is that, quite honestly, if a child is found to be having been shot at close range, any responsible government will only say, we should investigate this. It should not then immediately call it diabolical or LTT funded. That is not a responsible government. A responsible government says, a child is dead, we need to look into it, we will investigate regardless of who that child's father was. Okay, I will, I, I, will, I, will, I will put that to my panel, but I think it's also important that you say that the, uh, the position taken by HRW was that war crimes were committed by both sides. And Dr. Swami, you were making the point that this is a one-sided uh, uh, statement. Meena Kandasamy, uh, uh, as somebody who has uh, spoken up for the rights of the Tamil people quite outspokenly, are you willing to also take, uh, are you willing to take a balanced position? You've just heard Minakshi Ganguly saying war crimes by both sides, horror on either side of the trenches. Uh, I think, Barka, we basically have to differentiate between a state and an armed group that is resisting the violence of a terrorist state. So, uh, you know, of course, you can allege that LTT did this, they did that. But right now, there is no LTT. That's what the LLRC says. That's what the UN panel report says. That's what Sri Lanka says. That's what everyone's been saying and celebrating for the last couple of years, ever since May 2009. So when there's no LTT, I don't think, you know, of course, let's accept they were, they were you know, this. They might have used civilian shields. Whatever it is, whatever they're coming up with, let's accept it. But when this, as far as this particular resolution is concerned, I don't think, you know, we have to get so hyper about whether India is going to support or not. And, you know, regarding Indian support also, what I have to say is that, you know, the reason that we are giving, we are giving out, we are saying it will come back to bite India, it's going to come back to us, it's going to come back to us in Manipur and Kashmir. I mean, if we are 
you know, doing human right abuses, we should be investigated. So I don't think, you know, we should, all this idea of just that's because we're a big state, and okay. you know, it, it does not give us any kind of immunity. That's, that's oh, one okay. thing. Oh, okay. It doesn't secondly, give us I mean, immunity. LLRC report. Yeah. This, this, you know, please listen to me, Barka, because the entire panel, I mean, especially Subramanian Swami or Partha Sabi are not willing to talk the Tamil point of view. So please oh, listen to me. Tamil point of view. Uh, what I would I like to say again is, point. when you're let me, let me, let me come in here. Let me come in here. It is nothing but a love letter. It is nothing but a love letter to the Sri Lankan government by Mr. De Silva. Who is this De Silva? This De Silva was the same man who, who was responsible for driving out Justice P. and Bhag Bhagwati out of Sri Lanka. Bhagwati, I mean, Meenakshi Ganguly spoke about it. Bhagwati was in charge of the okay. uh, international. Okay, Meena, I must interrupt uh, here. Uh, I must interrupt here because we're also he joined. It sorry, sorry, I've got to interrupt here, but you do make an important point that how India votes is not going to give us immunity yes. on our own need to introspect where we go wrong. Yes, uh, it's not going to give. Yeah, got that US point. Got there? that the point. Resolution, the US resolution does not give anything. I, told to I find the interesting point that you make before I introduce a guest from Channel 4. Give me a second. Dr. Swami, quick response to an important argument. There is a difference between a state a const that, that is run by a constitution, by a rule of law, and a terror group. So you can't justify excesses you know, that, that, that are done by the Sri Lankan army by saying the NTT did it No too. one is justifying it. It's a question of uh, uh, an effective war. Uh, if that uh, t terrorist organization is only fighting Sri Lanka, I can understand. They came over to India and killed the Indian Prime Minister, a person who had been the Prime Minister of India. So this is not, no, this is not a, a simple this thing. Now, she, uh, this lady, uh, Kandaswamy, may be speaking for the LTT Tamils, but the Tamils of India want an orderly democracy in our country. They don't like but Mr. Raja sitting next to you is not speaking sure, for the NTT. He, he has a view. If but he has a view, it doesn't make him a yeah, yeah, supporter of the NTT. He doesn't make him the all of Tamil Nadu. It, it makes him a, a, a person of a particular person. Okay, can, can we so, get a perspective? That, that, that's not the issue. No, no, the issue Mr. is who Mr. is a Tamil and all. They cannot... Uh, no, uh, no, Mr. The LTT Swami should Tamil know, not even Indian before Tamil. Prabhakaran was born, even before LTT was formed, there was a Tamil question. Salva, of course there was a Tamil Salva question. I have written no, no, about listen, it long before you people listen, wrote about it. Salva Naika, Salva Naika was considered to be Gandhi of Sri Lanka. That's right. He and his son is with he, me. He is with me. It was a, 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 a non-violent yeah. movement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's just hear. Let's just hear. No, no, Mr. No, no, Raja, finally, this is finally. all about the Channel 4. It's also been uh, enhanced by the Channel 4 documentary. We have Callum McRae joining us from London. Before I take a quick break, Callum, can you, can you just tell us a little more of this image that the world has seen, this 12-year-old child, the Sri Lankan officials responding to the still image that they've seen say this is concocted, distorted, uh, we cannot verify the authenticity of this image. What according to your findings does this image prove? Caleb. Well, I think the image is, is particularly important for uh, a, a, a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, the Sri Lankan government has always responded to the evidence we presented and suggested it's, it's concocted. Um, I, I, it isn't. We have checked this evidence extremely carefully. Every time we get a video uh, or any kind of evidential material, we have it analyzed very, very thoroughly by uh, world's leading experts on, on, uh, on technical experts to analyze the veracity of the video and also forensic pathologists, uh, forensic pathologists who can analyze the nature of the wounds and, and establish uh, okay. how, uh, how, uh, how credible this is. And in every case, the videos we have used, they have found absolutely no reason to doubt that they depict accurately exactly what happened. So that's the first point. These videos are not concocted. And really, I find it a bit extraordinary that the Sri Lankan government goes on saying that, because in lots of the footage and lots of the videos, there are lots of people filming on telephones. Um, we have got some of it, but the Sri Lankan government uh, should be able to get all the rest of the material shot by all the other people. You can see them filming it in it. Okay. And if it's concocted, then show us that material as well, because these are their soldiers. All right. They haven't done that. They haven't even, as far as we know, tried to gather it, because they know it's not concocted. They know it's real. Um, and I think the second thing which is so important about this um, uh, uh, evidence is that it's yet more evidence of something systematic. It's more evidence not of just isolated acts by individual soldiers, but there is a pattern. People are tied, they are bound, um, they are blindfolded, uh, but, uh, with one exception, which is uh, the, the child. But there is a pattern here suggesting this is systematic. And when it's systematic, in a government which is as, in, a, in a, a military which is as disciplined as the Sri Lankan military, where the commanding heights of that military, including the president and his brother uh, uh, Gotabia, uh, when they assert that they were in direct control of this, uh, of this war, 
they therefore have to accept that they were in direct control of what happened. Okay. And that is why this issue is so serious. Because so you're, you're saying, very, you're very saying it reveals a larger pattern, not just excesses that unfold in combat. We are going to take a break and in the last segment, we're going to look at the image and say, let's assume there is a pattern, let's assume this is an authentic image. What should India do? Do we stand up for a moral absolutism or do we nuance our position as we've done so far saying we stand for human rights but we're waiting to see the text of that resolution. Final comments coming up on the other side. A new image released by Channel 4 says that among others, the NTT chief's son, a 12-year-old boy, took five bullets in the chest. This has led to critics and many parties back home in India saying Sri Lanka must be indicted at a UN body for war crimes. What should India do? Time now for final comments from our panel tonight. Mr. Narayan Swamy, you go on saying that the government will wait to see the full text of the resolution. But we have people here who are reading from the resolution and it seems the main point or the main dispute seems to be over whether India will support a United Nations investigation. Will we? Are we open to that? No, as far as uh, the boy, 12-year-old old boy was uh, killed brutally, it is a matter of concern because nobody will support uh, this kind of... Uh, the inhuman attitude which has been taken place there. But as far as the resolution is concerned, because we are not sure about the wordings of the resolution. Wordings of the resolution is very important. Okay. Now we are talking in the air. Unless until the resolution comes, then India has to apply its mind. Because I am I'm confident, in fact I told the Honorable Prime Minister when I met him, because I am also from Puducherry, I am also a person from Tamil origin. I, I told Honorable Prime Minister the concern of the people of Tamil Nadu and Puducherry about uh, the, the anger and also the anguish in the mind of the people of Tamil Nadu okay. and also my state. Therefore, therefore, I told the Prime Minister that government of India should very cautiously take a decision. The impression should not come that when the resolution comes on the question of investigation, the government of India is my personal view. I told the Honorable Prime Minister the government of India should support the resolution. Okay. That is what I told Honorable Prime Minister. But sir, your minister in the Prime Minister's office. Like Subramanian yep. Sami, who, who goes all out to oppose everything because we yeah, have to take a line <laughs> which is justiciable. Don't, don't equivocate with the time of crisis. The hottest place in hell is reserved for you. <laughs> but Mr. Narayan Swami, <laughs> you, you are... I'm very happy about it. I am, if, if, if Subramanian Swami says that I go tell, I'm happy about it. Okay. All right. Let me interject here. Callum McRae, here's the hard fact. Uh, the Sri Lankans seem to believe that the timing of, uh, of, your, of the release of your film is time to create moral pressure when that vote takes place at the UN body. But do you believe that the vote has any chance of going through when it's seen uh, by, many, by many countries as... as, as in a sense, it, intrusiveness uh, displayed by the West. In, in other words, if there are human rights violations, leave it to the countries to investigate. Create moral pressure for sure, but you can't do more than that. Well, I, I think that the central issue here is that what has happened and what the evidence that we've had, and there's a lot more evidence to come out, which will come out on the program when it's uh, uh, shown on, on Wednesday. Um, of systematic war crimes by both sides, but particularly systematic war crimes by, uh, by Sri Lanka, uh, by the government of Sri Lanka. Now, in terms of who should deal with that, it's not my job to tell uh, yeah. India how, how you should vote. Y you will decide that. But I think there are some very important considerations. And one of them is that there are fundamental international laws. There are fundamental humanitarian principles uh, which all countries should adhere to. And there is a collective responsibility on the world to ensure that those are adhered to by individual countries. Okay. That's not some kind of uh, imperialist uh, mechanism. Yeah. That's actually uh, the belief in the international rule of law. But the particular and I think most important thing to say about this whole context is that Sri Lanka is playing a, a really rather hypocritical game here because Sri Lanka throughout the course of the war was very happy to play the Western agenda and 
used the language of the global war on terror to justify what they were doing, which was to annihilate the LTTE, but also to, it seems now, clearly target the civilian, uh, civilian Tamil population around the LTTE. Okay, all right. Um, and so, uh, but they did this, they justified it, they used the Western agenda, they used the war language of the global war on terror, and only now are they suddenly trying to say, oh, this is all to do with interference. It's not, it's to do with principle. And I think one of the things I heard earlier, uh, the High Commissioner is talking about um, the, uh, the, this being a homegrown solution. We need to have a yeah. homegrown uh, uh, answer to this and trying to play the, uh, democr the sovereignty of, of Sri Lanka against uh, uh, outsiders. Yeah. But the reality is, A, they followed the Western agenda and used it when they were doing the war. And secondly, R uh, Mahinda Rajapaksa made a keynote speech to the United Nations in, in 2010 at which he said to the world, back off, we will solve this, we will investigate it, we will sort it out. Now, the first thing is that they haven't, because they haven't investigated it in any serious way. But the second thing is, as we will reveal in our programme, um, that speech was written for him by a British public relations company called Bell Pottinger, and the president had invited a British public relations company to operate from his office in Colombo to write speeches telling the rest of the world that he didn't want the okay, rest that of the is world interesting. interfering in his that, own that is, that, that is extremely ironic. There is ironic. Right hypocrisy here. That is extremely ironic. Partha uh, Tati, what would you say to that? That, that? that interference can't be played as a card now when it's been used in the past. Which, uh, no, look, look, look the f fact, a fact of the matter is, Quickly, the fact minute. of the matter is, Western interference is selective. They yeah. will not interfere in Saudi Arabia, they'll interfere in Iran. Yeah. We are a neighbor, not a distant country. So yes, we have to move the Sri Lankan government by moral pressure. Incidentally, this American resolution will not pass as it is. Yeah. Therefore, we should, we should get a resolution which is acceptable, turn the pressure on Sri Lanka to implement it, and then... More importantly, for God's sake, let's get along with our assistance to the Tamils who are alive. Uh, quickly, I, I quickly, say, just, just for a minute. India left. move a substitute resolution asking for devolution of power to the Tamils in the constitution, and that I'm sure will pass, and that's what the Tamil people in Sri Lanka want. They, want, they don't want all this politics that is going on. So push on for something rights. else that looks ahead. I'm coming to you, Mr. D. Raja. Minakshi Ganguly, just the last thought, 20 seconds. What are the options before Delhi? Do we spend our energy really talking more, as, as some here are suggesting, for, for greater rights for the Tamil people and not get embroiled in the larger debate? Um, Delhi, when uh, new, India, when it took the membership from the Human Rights Council, promised to uphold human rights principles. Human Rights Council is a body that looks at human rights situations. In, so therefore there is no question over here in sort of take, taking an ambivalent position. When there is a human rights situation, India has to take a position. And anxiety about domestic records, as many of your speakers have pointed out, no country is perfect. There are always domestic problems in each of those countries. Those also have to be addressed. But that cannot in any way terrify any government from not taking the real moral okay. position on a situation that is under discussion. All right. Meena, last words, just 10 seconds and we have to end. Uh, well, I think that India should push for an independent international investigation into what happened in Sri Lanka because it's a genocide and the number of people who died could be anywhere between 40,000, which is the UN figure, to somewhere like 80,000 to 100,000, which the Tamil groups are suggesting. So India should, you know, ask for much more than what the LLRC promises because the LLRC even talks against the idea of a Tamil homeland. So India has to be, you know, true not only to Tamils in Elam, but it also should be true to Tamils in Tamil Nadu, and therefore it should call for an independent international Mr. investigation. The US I, a, I agree. Now. India is the immediate neighbor. India knows what happened in Sri Lanka better than any other country in the world. That's why India has a moral responsibility. But it didn't just happen to Sri Lanka. Uh, uh, an Indian Prime Minister was assassinated by the LTT. We also have to remember that. We condemned. We condemned, but there it was a war against Tamil how population. Many, many the war which there? started as war against LTT, it, it, it became a war against the entire Tamil population. The issue is larger than what Mr. Swami is trying to uh, mislead the people. No, the so quickly, we've got no, to end. Quick, what do we do? No, wa first, India should take a position. India strives to become permanent member of the UN Security Council. If that India nurtures that ambition, India, take should, a clear position. India should take a clear position. Number one, the second part, as Ms. Parsa, yeah. Parsa suggests, it is a second part. Once we should... Sir, we'll take, we'll take a clear position 
After seeing the resolution, I've been telling it right time and again. You drop you your own resolution. The, India has to take a right, uh, the clear position. Clear position will come only when we see the resolution. Without but will it be a clear position, sir? Will it clear? be an abstention or will it be a clear position? Let, let the, let the no, government... Let, let, the, let the, see the resolution, then the decision okay. will take let the government... I am uh, happy without that, the resolution, let the government no, argue about it. I am happy let that the minister says... I am happy. Let there will be a clear position. Let, let the government draft a clear resolution <coughs> and put it. So as push a for a change. Take a position, but push for a change in the text of the resolution. Is something yes, perhaps so that we can. Yes. So otherwise, this resolution will not get passed. Let us get a resolution okay. that passes, but makes it clear there has to be a credible investigation, and then let's, for God's sake, go about helping the Tamils who are alive. And yeah. give them a better life. All right, we'll have to leave it there. G. Patathati D. Raja, Subramanyam Swami, Mr. V. Narayan Swami, Ninakshi Ganguly, Meena Kanda Swami, yeah. and of course, Callum McRae from Channel 4 joining us from London tonight. Thanks very much. This is a story that's going to hot up. There is going to be the documentary release and there is going to be the vote. Mr. Narayan Swami promises that Delhi will take a clear position. We'll be watching that story closely, but for now, good night. Thanks for watching. Yeah,